Psalms 119. Y'all get anything out of it so far? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Psalms 119, looking at uh, verse 63. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. Amen. I am a friend. Companion is friend. To all them that what? Fear you, Lord. Amen. And of them that keep your precepts. What's the precepts? Your word. To all them that are following the word of God. Or want to follow the word of God. Or have a heart to follow the word of God. Despite their flesh. Yes. Amen. I'm not going to sit up here and say this ain't a battle, people. It's still a battle with me every single day to keep God's precepts. You don't think I want to get up and act buck wild? I sure do. <laughs> but I realize who's my friend. If Jesus called me a friend, I need to love him. I know he loves me. So he's more important to me than you are. So by him being more important to me than you are, that makes you just as important. Because if God ain't important to you, ain't no way in the world. You call that brother a friend, he's important to you. Amen. If God is your friend, everybody you see, whether they're good friends or enemies, should be important to you. Because they're looking at you as an example or, or a Jesus type of Christ. Amen. Amen. How do we know you have foolish friends? This is how you know. How do you know you have foolish friends? Number one, they're not spiritual enough to discern the will of God. They're not spiritual enough to discern the will of God. I always say this. You can't be that spiritual if you ain't praying. Sir. Ain't no way in the world you can be spiritual and don't pray. Just that simple. Amen. Number two, they have no fruit of godly decisions in their own life. Here's another example. There's no results. What change did you see happening in them? I'm going to tell you what a change I've seen recently. And some of y'all thought it was a negative change. I already told him I was going to say it anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. There's been a change in Brother Robert. He's not catfish no more. Amen. Amen. What does a catfish do in a river? He's a scabby. Every time you call him catfish, you call him, I'm serious. Now, to me, this ain't funny. Because he's a man of God. He's a man of God with faults. That's Robert. Now, to those of you who have been close to him, it ain't no big deal. You know what gave me that revelation on that? My boy, y'all call him Monkey Dude. Now, I had no, I had no concept. I didn't ever think about his name. People told me his name is Monkey Dude. And I said, wow. He called me home. He's doing good. I said, James is his name. And I said, Monkey Dude. What does a monkey do? A monkey do anything. Why do you want to be called that? <laughs> That's my brother. And actually, he's mature in his. Are you mature for yours? And it don't mean he won't have another fall. That's a test in his pride level. When you fall, you're going to have another come pick you up? That's what you're saying. So stop referring to people by their street name. Amen? Out in the world, guess what my name was? Scotty. Mr. Smooth Scotty. That means I lay with anything that opens his legs. Smooth my way in. So I found a little puppy and I made sure I called it Scotty. That's why the dog is called Scotty. Because it's a dog. Because I was referred to as a dog. But when y'all met me, what was my name? Brother Warren. Amen. Warren means in the Bible, warrior. One who stands and does great warfare. Who carries a big sword. And does great battle. Never backs up in a fight. Amen. Which one do you think you want to be called? I'm Warren. What's your name? Amen. Amen. Number three, they themselves are not trying to go further. You're going to find that some people enjoy the level that they are on. Leave them there. Amen. Don't turn blue, red, black, purple in the face trying to get somebody to go with you. Leave them where they are. Oh, one, any spiritual, yes, it is. Number four, 
go to the spirit store? We need a photo. We need a six pack. Can you help me with some change? When you're gonna move back, when you're gonna move past that change and start having the feathers and prosperity that God has already made on you. I'm not no prosperity preacher. I'm talking about you already rich. I don't care how much money you got. You already rich if you're in him. He owns everything. But the only way you're gonna get it, you gotta line up and be this. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwells therein. So if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwells therein, and I'm his son, that makes me an heir. So that means that I'm going to get an inheritance from him because I'm one of his children. Amen. Don't mean I got to pay an X amount of time. Don't mean I got to keep giving it this and throw a million dollars at the top of feet. That means I just got to line up with God because I'm his child. And he said, be grateful who made me here. You willing to do that? The devil will give you anything you need to keep you from God. Amen. 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 So, they will never talk fast. They won't talk to you about scripture. They won't even agree with your vision. So if you're around somebody talking about, you know what, man, I think I'm going to school. I think I'm going to get my GED again. They thought, man, you 40 years old. What's your Get away from me. That means you don't tell that person your vision. Amen? Don't ever talk to nobody who can speak in to speak negative about whatever God put in your spirit about a vision, about an invention. Don't you know God give you something in the middle of the night to turn you into a millionaire the next morning? All you got to do is write it down. But we'll get it, remember it, go get high and forget it. Then wonder, hey, what did God tell me that, boy? Did you see it on TV? That's what he told me. But somebody else got to tell. Because you missed your blessing. Because you didn't obey Amen. This is how you test real friends. Ready? Number one. Are they concerned for your needs? Go to Proverbs 27. This is how you test real friends. Are they concerned with your needs? Amen. Because we as Christians are supposed to be concerned with other people's needs anyway. Amen. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27. Look at verse 10. 27 and 10 says, Thy own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of their of your calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. What is he saying? Amen. Look at what he's saying. Go to um, Proverbs 25. He said, Better is the neighbor. Why? The neighbor is concerned with your needs. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 25, verse 19. Verse 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Mm. Woo, I ain't got to say that. <laughs> oh, how do y'all you know have a broken tooth? I know I did. See, I ain't got one. Look. <laughs> oh, that thing hurt. Amen. <laughs> Boy, I ain't got to explain that. Number two, how do you handle conflict? How do your friends handle conflict? Can y'all conflict instead of beating one another? Yes. Or can y'all have a real heated argument and come to a conclusion or compromise and say, let's agree to disagree and move on and still love one another? All right, nobody right. Let's just go. But we write about one thing. Jesus loves you. Amen. Go to Proverbs 17. How do that friend handle conflict? A lot of them just walk away and don't want to have nothing to do with you. <laughs> they don't think, they think that's just being nice and don't want to get involved. But are you telling that other person? I don't like you no more. When you used to talk to me all the time, we used to laugh together, you know, tell jokes together. Now we had a conflict. You can't even say nothing about how you doing. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I know. It's easy. But you revealed your intent. Amen. You revealed your intent. Proverbs 17. Verse 17. 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. Ain't that so? Your friend loves you at all times, but your brother is born for hardship. How many of y'all have civil rivalries? Can't stand your sister or your brother. <laughs> I see the twins both raising hands. <laughs> All right, the next thing. How do they deal 
Ezekiel, no, go to 18, Proverbs 18, 24. 18, 24, that's another one on that. And man that has friends must show himself friendly. Amen. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Woo! That one there, boy, I got plenty of people I've been with that stuff close to me because. Amen. Ain't that awesome? I need to read that again. And man that has friends must show himself friendly. Are you showing yourself friendly? Amen. Amen. Or just to the people you like. That's easy to show yourself friendly to people you like. I'm the person you got conflict with. I'm the person you can't stand. Amen. I'm the person who stole from you. Amen. Gossip. Amen. No way. And you still say, how you doing and mean it? No. Or is it one of these? How you doing? <laughs> you don't mean it? <laughs> I need to interject this here. I like what T.D. Jakes said. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, I guess, a few years back. And he said, and he was talking about ministry. He said, there are three types of people you will get, and you can put this to friendship too. He said, you're only going to get these three types. Constituents. Uh, comrades and confidants. Now, he said constituents are people that we call, no, we ain't friends, we just associates. They only with you because they want to be seen with you. They only with you because you got some money today we can get high together. They only with you because you want to give me some sex. They only with you because you got something to offer. As soon as you don't have them, they're going to go. That's your constituent. That ain't my friend. Amen. Now, your, 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 your comrade is this. Y'all both the same warfare. And I like to put it to them here. You know why y'all comrades in here? Because y'all got the same condition in warfare. Homelessness. So now we comrades. But I watch people who got a job and don't want to come back here. Come, you know why? The war is over so they ain't connected to you no more. They only connected with you while you're fighting the same war. But when they win the war, they move on. They don't try to get you out. They leave you fighting. Come on, man. They don't even come back to teach you how to get home. Are going to be with you. And you can count on one hand how many you have in a lifetime. Amen. You know, my wife is my confidant. Amen? We're working on our best friendship. Because friendship is a lifelong process. Amen. You know? You can't be married and that person don't be your best friend. That's right. Right. That's right. You best friends fight and argue, you better know it. Yeah. But you know what best friends do in marriage? Come back and kiss. Amen. Amen. Do a little bit more than that too, but mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> But anyway, the confidant, the confidant is a person no matter what you're going through, good, bad, or different, they won't leave you. They won't leave you. They know you a mess, but they're going to love you through it. They're going to chat, but you know I'm still here for a call. They'll never leave. You can tell them anything, man. I did this last night. I did that last night. And I'm so sorry. I forgive you. But if you do it again, I'm going to tell you you're wrong again. Amen. Right. They won't stop their friendship because they love you. <laughs> Amen. How many of y'all got confidants? How many do you have? One, two, just two, three. Just two. Come on. Just two. If somebody tell me they got 10 and 20, they lie. <laughs> you are lying. All right, where do we leave off? Okay, here's the next one. Hope y'all got something out of that. But TV takes for that. How do your friends deal with confrontation? They always want to knock you out? My students, this is a good one here, boy. Proverbs 27, verse 5 and 6. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are <laughs> and correcting them. That ain't your friend. Amen. Why? It says faithful are the wounds of a friend. But that kiss, oh baby, you got to with me. A lot of men seek that in women. The father out there, man hurt them. Now, that's it. Oh, she's vulnerable now. Come on. Uh, I can't care. <laughs> when we live, he's smacking on you. Come on, team, no truth. 
Amen. Number four, can you tell them things in confidence? Proverbs 11. Can you tell your friends things in confidence? You kind of covered that with the TDJ thing, but I want you to see it in the scripture. Proverbs 11. Y'all getting anything out of this tonight? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. I know it's blessing me. Amen. Proverbs 11, verses 9. Let's look at verse 9. <laughs> and a hypocrite with his mouth destroy his neighbor. Mm -hmm. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Mm -hmm. Go down to verse 13. A talebearer revealeth secrets. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealed the matter. So that means my friends should be able to tell me anything and I won't run the Joe Blow. Amen. 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 You, you won't be coming home from work that evening, ladies, and you walk in the house after you're telling your friends something, and everybody in the house be looking at you. They know. How do they know? You only told one person. How did they get the room? Amen. Amen. Because you told the wrong person. <laughs> so whose fault is it? Yours? Amen. Know your friends. Know your friends. Number five. Do they give you wise counsel? They understand Proverbs 27. Proverbs speak a lot about it, huh? Proverbs 27. Do they give you wise counsel? Look at verse 9. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So doeth the sweetness of a man's friend by what? Heart counsel. Ain't that awesome, y'all? Look how this guy has something like that. It's like when your friend gives you wisdom and instruction that's going to lead you the right way, it's like perfect. You know it's right. Ain't no argument. You be like, thank you. I did that. Amen. Amen. All right. Instructions for friendship. These are the instructions. For friendship. <laughs> Be sensitive and considerate of your friends. Number one. Be sensitive and considerate of your friends. Let's go to Proverbs 25. Be sensitive and considerate of your friends. Proverbs 25, verse 17 again. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. What does that mean? Don't spend too much time at your boy's house. Amen. You know, at your girl's house. You, when we love you, go home. I like some private time, too. You know, I invite my friends over to get relaxed. You know, I let them go on and relax. Hey, man, do what you need to do. He can go, my home is yours. Amen. But be sensitive. But if they came over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I won't be answering the door. I'll be peeking out the blind. How many of those people you got that ring your phone, you see their name? Oh, God. Confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. Boy, this one beat me up. I'm done. I'm going home. He slipped his I'm done. I'm going home. All right, no. Number two. Come on, we got a little bit more time. Number two. Because at the end of this, I want to show you what kind of friend you should be. And when God showed me this, no, this is really just good care, amen? Number two, do not let money cause problems in your fridge. Oh, oh. <laughs> do not let money cause problems. Look, my pastor taught me years ago, he said, the thing that will kill a friendship is money. He said, now, if I'm old, if I don't come to me to loan it, he said, when I got the money, I'm just going to give it to you because I ain't got to expect it back. That's right. That way, our friendship will stay intact. If I don't have it, I don't have it. He rather give you the money and say it's yours. Yeah. But me, I'm saying if you say borrow, I'm coming to look for you. I got it. I said, boy, let me borrow this. I'll be like, mm hmm. Payday, I'm coming to hunt you down. <laughs> or I would take the old mom's way. Remember what the mom said? Uh, here it is. That's a cheap price to get rid of them. Uh, amen. Because as long as they owe you, they'll never come back and ask you for another dime. <laughs>